Hello everyone, welcome back to the RationalInvestor.com's Broiler Chicken Show. Uh, our uh, weekend frivolity, having fun on YouTube. Let's see if we're recording on YouTube. Chicken Show! Hey, we are. Awesome. Um, and actually, I was so stoked. <laughs> I found a button to be able to put away those stupid up and down votes. So I don't give a rat's ass what you think about the damn video. <laughs> oh, which I thought that was uh, that was my big win for the weekend. <laughs> I don't get distracted by that nonsense. Uh, but uh, let's see what the YouTube. Page oh, is. which I thought yeah, that was uh, that was. My That's good. So it just shows nothing. <laughs> Anyway, so um, uh, welcome back uh, to the fun. Um, uh, you know, uh, th while the school term is underway, I um, I like to do these uh, weekend shows as a bit of a dovetail to what they're talking about and doing in the uh, class. Um, if anything, this is a very difficult time. Um, it reminds me a lot of uh, the fall of uh, 2017 um, where we had a lot of new people coming into the crypto space and uh, it was uh, it was really easy to be a bull and it was really easy to uh, to uh, go out and just buy and not really worry too much about uh, prices collapsing on you um, and um, Ironically enough, it's uh, it's in these times actually it's most difficult to teach these kind of school programs of patience and discipline and waiting for setups and all that kind of talk. So um, ironically, I you know I do remember back uh, in January February I said I wouldn't be surprised by the end of this year that probably a lot of people uh, in the public are going to be kind of like well you know Brian yeah, it's kind of a waste of time listening to you right because everything's just face ripping up so. Just get out in there and buy. Um, and I do get the impression that that's, that it almost feels like that's the tone of the market, which is so ironic uh, for the public because, of course, um, um, I don't know. You know, it almost feels like we're living in kind of like a funny little fog period right now. And I get the impression that this is what usually happens uh, through these Jupiter-Saturn uh, events. Because uh, it was a really weird environment heading into the dot-com boom. And what was, I remember back in like 98, 99, everybody thought about what the future was going to look like. And there was just sort of this big sort of funny, you know, 2000. It was just such a huge psychological thing that you really couldn't wrap your head around. And it was just the future. And I remember a lot of earning statements and stuff said, uh, well, we don't plan to earn any money uh, until Q1 2000. So it sort of put that off into the new uh, millennium, right? Well, that's next millennium, right? So um, the fall of, and I remember in 98, long-term capital management exploded because the Russians defaulted. Um and we went into, and I also too, uh, through that 98 pivot, which is sort of when a lot of sort of long, you know, like guys who believe in these long-term cycles like I do, they were convinced that that was that 17 and a half year pivot off of the 80 low. But ironically enough, I don't think that that actually, you know, you could argue, I've been sort of mulling this over in my head for a while. But I distinctly remember that a lot of sort of old timers said that the new bull market started in the March of 82 uh, when the bond market broke out. And ironically enough, maybe that's when the next cycle officially starts, when the bond market officially breaks down. Because uh, you can see the bond market's teetering right now. It's getting ready to break. And I wouldn't be surprised in March of like 2021. Uh, the bond market finally breaks and, you know, maybe it, we have to wait till 22. Uh, and that's to sort of kick starts the next sort of uh, greed cycle. We go into a big orgy of buying. Um, also, too, thinking back sort of historically, 
think about sort of life in London through that particular Jupiter-Saturn cross uh, event. Was life normal through the Blitz? Because that's exactly when that Jupiter-Saturn cross happened. Uh, when I sort of, uh, my grandmother on my uh, stepmother's side, <laughs> step-grandmother, I guess, uh, their whole family uh, was based in, and the Canadian military to a certain degree was based in the UK, so I heard lots of sort of war stories growing up. Um, and it was a really weird time to be alive. People lived in sort of a very odd fog about, you know, whether the Germans were going to invade and stuff. And I suppose a very odd time period for the French at that time as well, eh? Not a lot of Europe. So, you know, these Jupiter-Saturn crosses, they're pretty damn big. <laughs> they're powerful. Um, you know, we did have one in 1980, and I remember then too. You know, at that point, uh, the gold bugs, and this is, I suppose, uh, the days that people like Peter Schiff sort of think about in hindsight which is always dangerous. Don't get sucked into yesterday's story. What we want to do is focus on tomorrow's story. And that's really hard to do as investors. Um, but, uh, you know, gold just was going, going straight up. The Hunt brothers were cornering the silver market. Uh, the uh, inflation data was just absolutely out of control. Jimmy Carter was basically a lame duck pre uh, president. He was pro-labor, so he, it wasn't like he was going to step on the necks of the labor unions, which is what ultimately eventually broke the back of inflation. Um, anyway, so the point here is that we are going through a monstrously, insanely significant event. Ah! <laughs> And I do find it actually kind of amusing that there aren't more people in our society talking about this. I find that fascinating. I mean, these events just don't happen every day. And if you look back in history, you go, holy shit, when these events do happen, some pretty big shit goes down. <laughs> oh, well, crazy world we live in. Um... So I do like the idea of trying to put 2020 into context. And I know it's probably tinfoil hats, crazy nutso, Brian Celestial, crazy nutso guy. But I definitely think we're at a very long-term pivot here. And we just, you know, half our job is just to get through it. I don't know. Uh, I get the impression, you know, if you look at the U.S. dead clocks and stuff like that, I don't hear anybody saying, well, this is it, there's, there's too much debt, it, it, it's, it's over. I haven't heard anybody actually say that at all, which I find fascinating. So, I mean, you can load up the debt clocks, they're funny to, uh, to load. I don't know, I'm sure, I, I don't know if I can do this or not, but I, I mean, this is sort of like anecdotal, you know, sort of Brian talking out of his butt kind of stuff. Um, I know there's one page in particular that's so cool. I mean, it's got like running things. Uh, Shark Toshi, he always shares. Yeah, this page. I mean, do these numbers at some point even mean anything? Nobody's really balking. Nobody's sort of crying wolf. Oh, my God. Well, I can't hit that number or all hell's going to break loose. I, I don't hear anybody saying that. So... If that's the case, then hey, Fakazi away. Twenty-seven trillion? Why not thirty-seven trillion? Why not fifty trillion? Why not a hundred trillion? <laughs> that's of course, you know, all you crypto kids. That's music to your ears. <laughs> um, I get the impression that usually empires fall when they can't pay the bills. Um. What I noticed is the reason why the uh, Soviet Union collapsed, um, and I watched it right in front of my eyes, and Gorby was running around desperately trying to keep it all together. But the bottom line, I remember specifically, the military went like months without getting paid. No money. <laughs> 
And as soon as you stop paying the military, then, you know, it's over. So the question ultimately is, does the market accept more? I mean, clearly you can see this number, just even it was, as I've been speaking here, it's probably gone up, you know, a good million dollars or so in debt. But nobody's crying wolf. Um, uh, Jimmy Rogers just mentioned it. Okay, well, I totally respect uh, uh, Mr. Rogers. Um, I always love his bow ties. Is he still wearing bow ties? <laughs> I love that. You know, somebody on the site was actually commenting, wow, wouldn't it have been so cool back in 2000 to like travel around the world and stuff? The U.S. dollar was really expensive and everything was so cheap. And yeah, Jim Rogers, I remember he had this little hot little chick uh, wife. Uh, it was probably like half his age. <laughs> and he had a convertible Mercedes Benz and a U-Haul trailer, and he and her jumped in it, and they literally drove around the world. <laughs> I mean, the just the absolute uh, epitome of American gluttony, right? You're, you know, you're driving through countries where people can't even find water to survive, <laughs> let alone food. And here comes Mr. American in his convertible Mercedes Benz with his trophy wife on his side and a U all behind him. Oh, I couldn't believe it. And nobody said boo when that happened. I was like, you wonder why the Americans are hated so much around the world. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, anyway, eh, what can you do? So, point that I'm trying to make here is I don't see anybody crying wolf here. Um, and if anything, I find it a bit amusing right now that uh, people are actually with a totally straight face basically saying, um, why are you not stimulating? I.e., you know, this reminds me of that poor little Republican back in the spring uh, sh shouldn't we debate this uh, this uh, new two trillion dollars in debt? Shut up! <laughs> Somebody get a soundbite of that, Andre. You totally got to get a soundbite of that. That you got everybody. That that should be a meme about the world that we live in right now. It's like money doesn't even mean anything, which is sad because. It will mean that at some point down the road, there will be a reckoning. But I don't see it today. Um, and if anything, that's, that's not a terrible thing. Uh, if you can uh, actually be invested in assets that can offset this facase. So uh, there is one particular asset that I think a bunch of you guys kind of like that that the whole reason I think it was built was exactly for this purpose. <laughs> when this goes nuts and this thing just doesn't work, and unfortunately we're going to head into like Zimbabwe kind of world, you know, you might just find your Bitcoins are 100 fucking Gs a piece. Maybe 200,000. Who knows? It's a little sad, to be honest with you. I mean, I grew up in a world where, you know, things like the money supply was highly respected. It was really important. Actually, what am I showing? I don't think actually I'm showing the debt clock on YouTube, am I? Um, I don't know if that's working. Let's see what the hell I'm showing there. Oh, yeah, I am. Hey, there you guys over there. Yeah, okay. Um, that YouTube page acts funny. And uh, I got rid of the likes, dislikes, so uh, <laughs> I don't even have to show that. All I have to show is, uh, is uh, the monitoring page. Yeah, there you go. Yes, you are good. Okay, awesome. Uh, what do you got there? All-time turtle lows. Oh, interesting. Um, I love uh, popping into the lounge on TR. I got to tell you, like, uh, some of our site members, OGs, oh, it's so great just uh, the information that we share with each other. Uh, Seb uh, is posting a really cool link. I'm going to have to look at that after I'm done ranting here. Anyway, so uh, this is the world that we live in. And I don't see anything stopping this world in the in the uh, short term. 
but I could very easily see that maybe, you know, maybe mid-March, April, as soon as we start getting things like uh, vaccines and stuff uh, approved, um, I could see there being a whole shitload of belt tightening. One thing that I did um, see interesting, and I've it sort of further validates my thinking here, is uh, watching the uh, public YouTube uh, uh, people uh, that are, you know, sort of... <laughs> I heard one guy. I couldn't believe it. He goes, uh, well, the data doesn't normally act like this. Back in the summer of 2018, it acted very differently. <laughs> it's like... Oh, you, you could just see the trap coming. It's like um, uh, back in uh, 2017, in the spring of 2017, there was a big uh, U.S. Uh, uh, hearing about Bitcoins, whether they were going to launch an ETF, and it was rejected, and then uh, the base was put in, then all fucking hell broke loose. And what I found fascinating through that was there were people on this site that had just sort of been participating and then all of a sudden the crypto market took off and uh, went parabolic and uh, they were like, uh, yeah, you know, now I'm a crypto expert and they were going off and teaching courses on how to invest. <laughs> uh, how did that go through 2018? Ay, ay, ay. So the point being that I saw uh, people making... Uh, historical references about how data normally acts using sort of like the past three to five years as their historical reference. And that is horrible. I always see that trap being laid at the top of these long-term pivots and the bottoms. People sort of get used to what's sort of sort of normal over the short term. And then they get sort of sucked into thinking that, hey, this is actually at an extreme when really it's nowhere near. And one thing that really bothers me about all this is I don't see a lot of people in that are sort of on YouTube and stuff talking about things like long-term cycles and the significance of us coming into some really important long-term cycle pivots. Um, as you can see, we have lots of fun talking Bitcoin. Actually, this week, and I should this is what I should really be talking about. Um, the kids did uh, fib uh, retracements and extensions in level one. Is that correct? Anybody here was actually in the level one class? That would be nice to know. I didn't know whether it was. I did see somebody ask a question about um, uh, 38.2s, and um, I threw in some charts in the uh, in the level one uh, classroom to talk a little bit about it. And so this this would be sort of my thinking fib wise. What's happening with this rally? And actually, a really cool way to use 38.2 to sort of help you judge where sort of, you know, okay, things have gone a little bit too far, and then you start seeing divergences come in, and it's like, oh boy, what, what should happen? Um, so, uh, I suppose we can talk about this, but um, I just wanted to finish that other thought. I was in, like, mid-rant about long-term interest rates. I just don't know where the best place to show people this uh, probably not there. Um, let's go new chart, maybe. And the problem here is that these trends, man, they take forever to turn around. I mean, like forever. So, uh, so long that you end up sort of missing, you know, the message of the forest through the trees. So I, you know, I have to zoom out to a weekly chart to show you. So uh, as I sort of said, this was uh, that, you know, there is 1980. Interesting how there was a spike there, right, in February 1980. And then actually rates ultimately peaked in September 81. Remember I said that they officially called the start of the next bull in March of uh, 82 because that's when the bond market theoretically broke this nutso insane around uh, this is a sell-off in bond prices a rise in yields so you know if anything this is and this isn't going to turn tomorrow but i think we just have to respect and me ironically enough this is probably through your entire life lifetime like your whole lifespan for a lot of you 
that you've lived in a falling interest rate world. This won't persist. Uh, in fact, you know, a lot of sort of cycle people, if you, uh, you know, do the whole YouTube tinfoil hat kind of stuff, uh, they often say that these cycles move in about 70, 70, 70 to 90 year durations. Interesting uh, how I think it corresponds with Pluto's orbit. <laughs> Where's shade? Jupiter, uh, Plattern, uh, Pluto, oh God, I can't even say them. Pluto, Saturn, uh, uh, conjuncts and oppositions. Yeah, I think I've shown you that chart. It's a really cool chart, too. Um, anyway, so what I'm worried about here is that this, this trend will ultimately start turning. I don't think it's going to happen today or tomorrow, but this is probably what sort of we're waiting for to say, all right, the next growth cycle is officially in, is when this thing ultimately looks like a big fat W. They sure tried here, right? And ironically enough, this is actually my entire thesis was that I figured at the end of 2017, beginning of 2018, this cycle was due to turn. But it looks like we had one more FU, and the markets do that. I mean, I do find it fascinating that the market was kind of like, well, we can't really go until that damn Jupiter-Saturn shit's out of the way, and then we don't have to worry about that for another, you know, 20 years. So um, that's sort of what I'm thinking is going on here. But what I find fascinating about this is... Do you guys kind of see that there's a window here where are the banks making any money? I mean, we all have to understand that, that banks make money on a spread basis between short-term borrowing rates, what they can borrow on the uh, money market, and what they lend out to the public. Keep in mind, this is a 10-year uh, treasury bond. So bottom line here is this is what they sort of make on the longer end. All right, especially since short-term interest rates are zero. But it's not a hell of a lot of money. 0.84%? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> um, so is it in the bank's best interest for their customers to take advantage of this low interest rate environment? Um and pay off a whole bunch of debt. Well, they can right now in this very low interest rate environment. And I really like this thinking because it makes a lot of sense. I think the answer is no. <laughs> I think the banks are like, fuck, man, this is brutal. We're not making any money at all. Is there any way they could, one, maybe encourage more borrowing but then also, too, and, and of course, you know, especially it's stupid. I mean, why isn't anybody in the public asking why the credit cards are charging the interest rates that they are right now? What was the definition of usury like hundreds of years ago? Wasn't it? I thought, I thought the official cutoff of being a loan shark was 30%. Cheryl says uh, they do it because they can. Well, I, I mean, okay, fine. Unsecured debt, that's totally fine. But the feds, I mean, come on. The feds lending at a quarter of a percent and they get to charge 30%. Do you think there are a few people out there in the world that are kind of living off of credit cards right at the moment? I would say that's, that's, the odds are pretty high. In fact, actually, I watched one guy, and frankly speaking, I walk around Europe, and, or Europe, <laughs> I walk around Vancouver, and it, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. They just keep fucking building these buildings, and there is nobody around. <laughs> it's baffling. It just, it is absolutely baffling. So, uh, there was a guy on YouTube that uh, did a video. Uh, he uh, just videoed downtown London. And London, you know, I mean, you know how expensive fucking real estate is in London. 
Um, and shops are empty. There's just nobody around. Huge like places that would just be crammed with people. There's just nobody around. So my question here is, if you were a banker, what would be the best thing in your best interest to have happen here? Would it actually be in your best interest while rates are as low as they are to have your customers pay off all their debts? I think the answer is no. Um, so, is there anything we can do to maybe encourage uh, them not paying their debts? <laughs> I don't know. Let's derail the economy. Okay. I mean, uh, tinfoil hats, all that kind of shit. Uh, you know, I do find it fascinating that, you know, while the uh, craziness was going on in the summer uh, and the wildfires were burning here in, uh, in uh, the West Coast, there were people that they found actually walking up and down the freeways, lighting fires, um, and were very sort of directed. It wasn't like they were just out, oh, you know, let's throw some matches. I mean, they had like fuel and they had, they had like, uh, you know, like little blow torches and shit. So, you know, tinfoil hats, uh, what can you do? Do they maybe stir the pot a little bit? Remember J.P. Morgan, millionaires disregard uh, astrology, billionaires don't. Do they help the equation along a little bit? I think so. I really do. I hope humanity can learn from this. I really do. So, back to our story. <clears throat> um. Is it in the bank uh, bank uh, people's uh, best interest here to uh, have their customers pay off their debts? And I don't think it is. So uh, can we maybe create programs that might encourage more borrowing? Okay, well, that's one way to offset sort of uh, losses. I did notice with regard to credit card debt there that uh, this uh, gentleman uh, um, out of, I think, California, he fancies himself a little real estate mogul. Uh, he's been doing YouTube videos, and everybody's uh, darn impressed with him. So, I mean, keep on keeping on. Um, but he was saying that some of these big banks, they are just loading up on the uh, debt provisions on their balance sheets, getting ready for just a shitload of uh, defaults, <laughs> including a bunch of credit card default. So, but anyway... I like the idea that the banks are encouraging their customers to not only borrow more money, but also too, and this is the cheeky part, this forbearance kind of thing. You know, ironically enough, as long as this forbearance stuff is going on, I can't see real estate prices collapsing. Everybody's just gonna just kick the can down the road. And so that's another reason why I don't think the market's gonna break here. Um, if anything, um, this is all going to be kicked down the road. So, you know, sort of this week and probably this month and probably my hunches right in through uh, December, uh, the end of the year, uh, everything is kicked the can down the road. And I don't think there's going to be too many sort of implications. I suppose you could argue we have a huge political uncertainty here event coming up. The irony of it all is that actually I, I ho I'm going to just sort of keep my fingers crossed that um, people have overbilled how chaotic it's going to be. And this goes relatively well. But I definitely think, you know, uh, at least probably the first week or two following the election, there's going to be a lot of angst about who won. Which means there's probably going to be a lot of volatility in price. I wouldn't be surprised if things like Bitcoin spike into that event. Uh, remember Druckenmiller in the 2016 election? He, uh, you know, I can probably show you here. Um, he actually famously... Um, uh, I wonder how the hell we do that. I guess probably like the spot market. Hopefully it still shows it. In 2016, he actually like shorted into the rally on election night. So uh, he famously, uh, this was the election right here. And the irony of it all for all TRI, or especially level oneers, you just did this module. Remember, we always want to talk about confluence of levels. Never really want to have just one reason to consider taking a trade. 
I mean, in this case, we might find momentum divergence. We might even be thinking that, uh, you know, I don't know, horizontal support and resistance looks like there's a bunch of highs up in here. So, you know, just maybe uh, for fun, you could probably even use that gap as a top of a range here. But let's even go like there and just say, well, you know, I'm thinking my gold's coming into a shorted level. Uh, that B mission is crazy reload zones. Right, so and in comes an M top. Oh, yeah, he was right, son of a bitch. Now look, it's breaking down. There it goes. <laughs> Anybody getting that? It's so funny to come into the lounge and people have grabbed little sound bites of Brian <laughs> and wake up and fuck it, mom. <laughs> what the hell was that? Jesus Christ, he's going off again. <laughs> but you've heard me talk about, hey, have you ever seen the market smiling at you? Right. And actually, here, let's do a sound bite. Uh, anybody uh, want to do it? So we'll do it in like sort of, uh, you know, James Dean sort of blah, 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 boom. So, uh, you know, if you ever see that market smiling at you, blah, 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 boom. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, point here is that this is like sharpshooter. I think I've told you like total pro trader. Guy I worked with for a few years at a company called Top Step uh, down out of Chicago. Um, and actually, I try and send as many of our students there as possible. I think they're a pretty reputable prop, prop firm. Um, uh, this guy, Brandon, he used to always hit this 61.8. And can you see that that's just his trade? I mean, it's just right there in glorious Technicolor. And like I said, uh, Mr. Druckenmiller, who would uh, make uh, both Brandon and I blush, he was famously selling into that rally on election night. That was the rally of election night. So the market spiked violently and then just absolutely collapsed on the other side of it. Really good example. So, you know, this is the kind of shit that I wouldn't be surprised is going to happen here, everybody. Uh, get ready. There, there, there's going to be some volatility. The interesting thing is, are they going to set trades up here into that event? You know, one might uh, argue there's a very different looking picture. We're not really, I mean, I suppose we got that old high to work with there. Um, probably not the most well defined, but I wouldn't be surprised. You know, just follow whatever the low is here, but keep an eye on things like Mountain Man, these clusters up here. You know, you get some, I could easily see election night. I mean, I don't know where we're going to be, but actually, this is a good application of where we ought to uh, go uh, from what the level oneers just did. I mean, technically, uh, and I posted a few of these charts in the, um, eh, it's a good uh, segue, this works well. Uh, I posted a few of these charts in the, um, in the level one room um, of uh, letting the first stop target actually help you sort of see the health of the trend. Uh, let's see, where was that? So, uh, I posted, um, here's a couple of examples where the 38.2 as our first stop target actually defined the end of the, the bull. So this was the, uh, 2000, what is that? 2018, 2019 bottom, big rally and pull back to 38.2 counter trend rally candle body highs or trade location learn this shit people over there on youtube this stuff is sick i think i've told you guys before and actually i haven't put it out in the um in the twitter verse um i i keep the point of this is not to say um uh Hey, this is Brian's and it's a secret. Hey, pay me money so you can learn my secret. Fuck, I couldn't give a shit about that. This is the universe's information. And when I'm more receptive to the universe and I give to the universe, the universe goes, oh, Mr. Beamish, yeah, you're playing ball. Fuck him, Bob! <laughs> Merry Christmas. I fucking I never knew what a fucking Bob was before. The universe just handed it to me. You know, and that's that's karma. Right, universe likes what I'm doing. Universe says, "All right, here's a fun little treat." Fuck <laughs> about. Anyway, you know, I mean, I've known this concept forever, but try and learn this on YouTube, right? It's but it's not some sort of fucking crazy secret. It's just the universal information. Candle body highs as trade location is sick ass fucking trade location. <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> like and subscribe. 
Ring Colleen's bell. Ring my bell. Ring my bell. Ding dong. Ring my bell. Right. <laughs> Off on a tangent. I love when I go on with these things. Things. Uh, I dare you. I dare you. What? Uh oh. What, what is she daring me to do? <laughs> um, all right. So anyway, the point here is uh, good example. Market uh, tested thirty eight point two. First stop target and went. Nah. Fuck it. I'm a bear. Even put up another fight. Okay, no, 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 no. Maybe I'm a bone. Okay, well, no, maybe I'm a trading range. Well, I could get my act together. Oh, fuck it. I'm a bear. And I'm a bear. I'm a bear. I'm a bear. So, really good example of 38.2 failing. Just let it help you. Right? Expect 38.2 tests to happen. They happen all the time. And their resolution will really tell you about the health of the trend. So, another example. I don't know whether you guys ever uh, heard of this, but this Bitcoin thing, it was actually up almost to sort of like 20 Gs there a little while ago. Did you guys know that? I didn't know that. Jeez. <laughs> if you drew a fib off of the whole range and let the 38.2 help you with the resolution, well, I think that helped as well. And this was a famous resolution. This was the day that uh, uh, Mr. Hart cried. You broke my Bitcoin, you bastards! <laughs> oh, man, that is great. We haven't heard too much. Actually, I think he's getting pretty excited about something. Well, what's his project? It's like NEO or one of those kind of coins anyway. So, um, Point here is another fantastic analogy of that 38.2. Just let it be tested, and its resolution will tell you about the health of the trend, and in this case, it failed, and I'm a bear. So, uh, are there any examples where it was tested and the market resolved? So here you can see we could have very easily tested 38.2. Come up here, rolled over, and I'm a bear. But no, in this case, 38.2, big W's, okay, oh, here we go. So it's a great tool just to help you sort of see, you know, what is the health of the trend. So with that said, um, you know, if I was looking at uh, gold right now, uh, you know, it would seem logical. I mean, it sure looks like this is some sort of cycle base. Eh? I think that's pretty common sense. Um, it would seem logical at some point we just have a very natural 38.2 check. What I'm also worried about, this is a weekly price chart, folks. You don't have gaps on weekly price charts just sitting there unresolved indefinitely. As well as this gap right here. Looks like there's some more gaps in there. Eh, this has got trouble written all over it. Uh... Uh, if anything, I feel kind of sad for, you know, all the gold bugs of the world anticipating that gold would sort of uh, be this cycle's fear proxy like uh, it was for the baby boomers when they first came online in 1980. And it's interesting. You know, my hunch is probably many of you and probably, well, may, maybe not many of you, because a lot of you guys who watch, you're pretty smart. I think you, you've, you're getting your act together, especially site people and stuff. I think uh, I've got to you. And actually, I really like that, man. I keep hearing messages about for that from people that uh, you've corrupted me, Brian. I can't look at the world the same way anymore. <laughs> um, which is, I think, is a good thing. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I would be willing to bet that, you know, I, I wouldn't be willing, I would, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if Bitcoin has some sort of nuts so face rip move up here. Do we go up and t take out those old highs? I don't know. That's, that's up for debate, but, you know, mid to high 17s and we can look at the Garley chart. I mean, it's just staring us in the face. That seems logical. Uh, but I do feel kind of sad for the gold bugs. They, their case just never got going. And the problem here with gold is look at the volume pattern. Something's not right here. Uh, uh, the actual, it's almost like the amount of interest in participating in this market is really waning. 
Uh, this this gets this could get this bull could be in in for some trouble. So you know, over the short term, I might be looking for sort of sixteen and change, but I wonder if uh, Mr. Druckenmiller is setting himself up for some sort of uh, counter trend rally short idea uh, on that election event. Uh, keep your eyes out uh, peeled for that. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, and unfortunately, gold, you know, in my opinion, especially with the Jupiter Saturn, I mean, once that Jupiter Saturn cross happens then uh you know we actually have to start looking at this from the other perspective because then all of the shit that's been sort of pushing us in this direction it's going to start unwinding so my hunch is things like well forbearance uh, we're not going to sort of let you off the hook anymore you got to pay your rent you actually have to start now paying back the shit that you owe could we get some sort of emergency government bailout uh, uh, plan to pay those forbearances that wouldn't surprise me um, but that's going to be on the other side of the event right and it, it may even be sort of contingent on you getting a vaccine or something along those lines but it's on the other side of the event it's going to be fascinating to see who's driving the bus come January 1st down in the United States of America. I'll tell you that much by crackers. <laughs> Ironically enough for these long-term cycles, I mean, do you think Jupiter Saturn gives a flying fuck who's the president of the United States of America? I mean, honestly, they don't care. Uh, the universe doesn't care. I would argue that spirit couldn't give a shit whether you're Catholic, Muslim, whatever. It, it that's what color hat are you wearing it's irrelevant at the end of the day i might argue that politics to a certain degree is somewhat the same thing the demographic forces are the demographic forces the economy is the economy ironically enough the interest rate cycle is being set up where i think they're just getting ready to zimbabwe the shit out of us which is fine you know and my hunch is there's going to be some sort of huge currency crisis, probably in like 2035, 2040, something like that. And at that point, we officially make our official transition to crypto. But I don't think that happens just yet. I mean, actually listening to sort of the higher ups and stuff like that, they don't believe in leaving the fiat sort of honor system the way that we sort of trust central bankers and stuff like that. I don't hear them talking about leaving that system uh, go listen to that IMF uh, video. Uh, I thought that was an excellent analogy. Mr. Uh, Powell was simply there to, uh, you know, give face and to acknowledge that this is the future. But, you know, they all acknowledge crypto still has a very, very long way to go to sort of take over. Um I might argue that the Chinese, to a certain degree, are kind of playing with fire. Um and, you know, maybe, uh, if, you know, I'm, I, I'm sure they would be the first to want to leave a U.S. hegemony kind of world. Keep in mind, I think the yuan is still technically pegged to the U.S. dollar. So, um, you know, they may be the drivers. I noticed that, you know, through all this economic turmoil and stuff, the Chinese are coming in and filling the vacuum and buying up shit that people are trying to sell out of panic. So in in a in a way there, um, uh, they may just fill the void. So anyway, there's a whole bunch of rhetoric. Blah 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 blah. Okay, um, long and short of it here, I'm not buying any gold. You know what I tell you, I would be buying. Holy Jesus H Christ, this is so awesome. Um, Seward's really just humming along, and uh, the screeners are just looking beautiful now. So um, I'm a big fan of uh, this concept called key reversal. Um, and it's a rare event. doesn't happen that often. But <laughs> on the 15th, all fucking hell broke loose in the stock market. And the key reversals were just all over the place. So super stoked. I was just going through. Seward's getting the engine sort of back up and running. He had to do a whole reconstruct of the way he did things. But just great to see lots and lots of signals being generated now. So tons and tons of candy for me to look at, both on the long and short side. And like I said, I'm a super uh, fan of key reversals. So when I saw that, <laughs> and engulfing patterns almost uh, pooped my pants. 
And just to give you an idea, I was showing you that there just a moment ago, eh? Um, and it's cool because we are kind of having a problem with getting these smaller, just quick sort of pocket charts that you can just load up. This is the candle, the key reversal, but there's General Motors. Holy moly, what a great example. Um, I don't know what the best place to show, I guess. Off of, uh, so I'm just going off of this screen. Um, and actually, it's you know this is an interesting proxy on the electric vehicle industry because these guys are coming in hard. But uh, there's that key reversal signal, and you tell me was that a good signal? Ram! <laughs> I mean that's the shit I want to see. So uh, way to go, Seward. I'm super soaked. So we still have until January first. Uh, we're still betaing this stuff up, but wow, what a powerful system! Super stoked, and now it's it's getting a little bit more user friendly here. Um, I think for the free uh, system, um, you know, these are the screens that we just have on the uh, free. It's interesting how uh, Waves just keeps coming up on uh, screeners, uh, one after another and after another. I mean, you tell me. That's being given away by TRI for free right here. I mean, is that kind of information? I mean, it, I don't know whether you like using indicators, Ws or uh, indicators, whether you like using Ws in price. I mean, that's that's pristine. It's beautiful. Um, I'm not quite sure what the what the thing did, but uh, I don't know, let's go see what happened. Probably fell apart. <laughs> uh, what was that? It was like on BNB or something like that, wasn't it? I'll be curious to see what happened. Waves B and B. So I guess that's on like Binance or something. Waves B and B. Do 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 do. Holy shit! Uh, what do you think? I mean, you people on YouTube, you saw how that screener told you. <laughs> I mean, and the best part about this is this screen was written by a student while we were just you know fucking around looking at charts. Hey. What do you think? What we're at? What do you what do you think? Is does this work? I don't know. Hey, let's try this. Let's try that. <laughs> I mean, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> so I mean, this is the shit that we're building here at TRI. I think that signal is in here. So jump, 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 jump. Where it goes. Uh, so uh, what's that? I think we used to say that's uh, Russian mafia crypto for the win. <laughs> uh, the only problem is uh, Seward's working for the Dutch government, isn't he? So uh, we got we have a problem here. <laughs> inside joke. Everybody on the inside should understand that joke. Uh, or is he working for the Euro? Maybe if he's working for Eurozone, then maybe. Uh, <laughs> mind you, I, I don't think Russia and the Eurozone get along too well. Anyway point here is uh, you should look at that chart and um, just, you know, YouTube talking out your ass, right? And, you know, the Barstool guy. Why doesn't that Barstool guy learn this concept? I'm telling you, man, this shit will make you rich. <laughs> you just got to learn patience and discipline. <laughs> um, I mean, let's, let's walk through the YouTube and, uh, you know, you guys on the site. Uh, well, maybe there's some free trial people here. But uh, let's see if you can tell me how to do this. What's the first thing that we should uh, probably think of if we're going to go and invest our hard-earned money? Anyone? <whistles> yeah, that's, uh, that's actually part B of the uh, question, Colleen, but you're so smart. Come on, all you lazy-ass YouTubers. Get off your asses. I got in on waves. Good location. Location? Hey, there's Felipe. Felipe owns the fucking school, man. I love... Man, I should read you some of Felipe's uh, comments on the site. Oh, he's just... I love these angels. Just get to surround yourself by these uh, beautiful people. Protect the downside. No. Nope. That's the very first reason that we have a plan location rocker all right there you go bob t location 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 but i already know you guys are already tri'ers 
I was kind of hoping maybe some of the the uh, the uh, YouTubers that uh, um, Eric Eric Greco. Anyway, first thing you should always say. In fact, actually, I put a cool tweet out to this effect. Check this out. This is a uh, because this is exactly what's going on here too. This is actually, ironically enough, this is actually an incredibly cliche event in the market. How ironic! It's actually cliche. <laughs> hey, 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 Graham. Um, awesome class today. Actually, I have your follow-up question. Somebody doesn't like me buying uh, coins with too many coins out. And actually, that's good. I like that. <laughs> but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but uh, what was I? Uh, ta oh yeah. Uh, so we'll go over here. And then we'll go over here, and we'll go here. Um, so uh, this is actually just stunningly cliche. And if you're um, if you're watching on YouTube, you know, go go follow on Twitter at CR Investor is my handle. Uh, I've had that handle actually. Uh, the reason why it's CR Investor. Is uh, when I for, when I was back when I was a broker, I actually uh, I was quick on the internet and online, and uh, this was geez, well I guess it was like two thousand two, two thousand three, um, and I registered the domain uh, the rationalinvestor dot com. and uh, at that time there was actually a guy in Minnesota. Uh, who had the, I don't know whether it was a copyright or I can't remember how it worked back then, but in essence, he sent me a very polite message saying that he owned the rights to the Rational Investor and uh, if I used that name, he was going to contact his lawyer. Ugh, jerks. So I had to label myself CR Investor, which was the Canadian Rational Investor. <laughs> so that's how I got around that. Anyway, um, so on TradingView, I think that's my handle, CR Investor. And on Twitter, I think it's also CR Investor, something like that. Uh, C, yeah, at CR Investor. So if you're wondering why the hell do I have that name, there you go. Anyway, this is, uh, you know, it's one of the setups that I learned with one of the very first uh, trading setups I ever learned. And it's just simply the idea of coming in, uh, buying against the bottom end of range, and looking for the 50% bounce. Just, I mean, you want to make money from trading, and I don't give a fuck about uh, the trend. I don't care about the story. I want to make money from trading. Learn this shit. It's, it's time-tested. It actually was first developed, you know, well over a hundred years ago. I'm sure there's probably some kids online who are going to claim ownership of this kind of shit, but this stuff's been around forever. Anyway, point of the matter here is, uh, if you can just follow these three rules, and this is what I was asking to start off with, so I'll leave it on the screen. Now, everybody, please tell me, what is the first reason you should have for ever considering risking your money in the marketplace? This is assuming after you've already gone through the, why am I doing this? What kind of money am I working with? Where am I going to be trading? What am I going to be trading? Blah, 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 blah. Now I'm actually hunting setups, reasons to actually consider risking my money. What is the absolute number one reason you should always consider first before you ever think of anything else? A uh, YouTube? I'm waiting. Sure, I'm going to get some down votes over that. Hit the if you like free information and you like puppies, please hit the like and subscribe buttons now. <laughs> if you don't like puppies, well, I don't have time for you. <laughs> Kittens? <laughs> oh, I like kitties. Yeah, but that's a that's a different conversation altogether. <laughs> ar, 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 ar. Now that will get some down votes. <laughs> All right. Nobody? Oh my god, you guys are killing me. Nobody on YouTube, eh? Well, the answer I'm looking for is right on the screen. What does number one say? Right on the damn screen. Oh, you guys are killing me. 
<laughs> All right, obviously you're not in a playful mode kind of day. Location, 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 location. And if you like puppies, buy Doge. <laughs> so all I did was just simply say, well, there's the bottom end of the range. There was the top end of the range. I whited out the uh, top fib uh, level here so it didn't get in the way of the pretty picture. But basically, this is what I like to call um, my reload zone. All right, 61.8 to 78.6. This is the point at which I can start thinking about being a buyer. Then I want to go down and look at my momentum indicators and see, hey, gee whiz, momentum's actually not so bad. We're stupidly oversold, and actually moment, price momentum is actually stronger than what price itself would lead you to believe. In this particular case, I just looked back and went, gee whiz, look at that beautiful W. I'm just going to buy that damn W. There was also a gap fill there. I was watching price through here, and I was just like, fuck it, man. I like this thing. Everything's come in here. Just buy it. So I did. <laughs> you know, it's ultimately, you know, to start you off, right, to make sure you're doing best practices, best thing for you to do. Build that goddamn trading plan and just learn to religiously stick to that trading plan because you got to learn good behavior. It's probably going to take you a few years to get to the point where you stop looking at a FOMO move and going, hmm, should I buy that? I don't know. You know if you ever do get to the point where you're intuitively trading and that you know there's a guy that i used to work with out of new york i uh, ran a program called intuitive development for traders that's ultimately where we want to get to and that's kind of the conversation about um i think i've showed you guys this before um we got to get to the point as investors and traders and stuff that we're doing this Right, we're just running around. We we see something we like, and we go for it. So, the problem here is, <laughs> if you see an asset screaming up to uh, fifty two new fifty two week highs, and it's on a divergence in momentum, you have to understand. Fuck it, I can't touch that goddamn thing. Got to leave it alone. Got to leave it alone. So the point here is if you don't understand how to intuitively trade to make money intuitively, then build the plan, stick to the plan, and you are only as good of a trader as you are of sticking to your plan. And that's kind of like this up here, right? This guy right here, he's just learned what a plan is. This guy here, he's just trying to figure out whether he can stick to the plan. This guy here, or girl, I'm not sure, girl or guy, but he's he's off trading and you know, very simply put if he actually looks down and goes oh shit i lost money and looks and went why the fuck did i fomo that then hey maybe this guy's uh, back to here and you have to actually recognize that in yourself and you have to stop it because remember there's nobody in trading to be there a policeman you know, I think if anything, that one of the great parts about TRI is we got people like me and Kevin and Josh and um, Graham and, you know, uh, Kiran and Murad. I mean, the list goes on and on. Julian Seward, et cetera, to help you. Right. Just slow down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down. Slow down. Don't blow yourself up. Right. Do this. Do that. Journal, journal, journal. So that's, you know, one of the awesome parts about TRI in our community. But uh Make no mistake about it, most traders, they're just out on their own, and they got to be able to do this on their own, which is tough. Uh, yes, Kevin is Kvarkinator. <laughs> hey, Kevin, you got a microphone? You want to, Somebody's asking uh, for a uh, soundbite from you over there on YouTube. You want to say hi to these good people? No, put him on Hello. The hey, there he is. Hey, rawr, Kvarkinator, checking in from New Mexico. How's the weather out there? Uh, it's actually getting a little cooler. Nice. Yeah, man, I went out yesterday. It's getting nippy up here in uh, Canada. Ah, the snow's going to fall soon. Okay, uh, back to our story. So, uh, yes, uh, Kevin is a Kvarkinator, and the Kvarkinator is Kevin. Um, <clears throat> what was I talking about? Uh, oh, yeah, so, you know, that uh, Twitter image. I mean, it's the same thing. 
Right? I mean, you can just draw your fib. I mean, you want to go off of this low? That's fine. You can go off of these lows, whatever. Boy, and actually, great illustration of 38.2 needing to be resolved, and it was resolved bearishly. Ugh, so, <laughs> first stop. Uh, it turns out that was just the first stop. There was still many more stops to go. Um, there is our reload zone. So, and the cool part about it is, you know, we can actually program the screener to just simply say, look at, you know, maybe you get Davos, but only show me Davos that are in the reload zone. Oh, <laughs> so awesome. But the point here is, you know, we have location. So now step two is, do I have indicator confirmation? Um... In this particular case, oh, wow, look at that huge uh, MACD div there. Huh, isn't that interesting? Beautiful volume breakout here. Like I said, uh, the screener itself, talk about indicator confirmation. You aren't going to get a better uh, indicator confirmation signal than uh, Davos. <laughs> I mean, Davos, in essence, are... Um, are the uh, the ultimate indicator confirmation, just telling you, hey, this son of a bitch is going up. I uh, wanted to get Sior to build a bearish Davo on here, but I don't think we have that on here. I know it's on his to-do list, but it'd be great. You want to just trade short-term momentum? Oh my goodness, they're just so awesome. Uh, just trade Davos all day long. Uh, just really powerful little momentum signals. Anyway, uh, back to our story about waves. Um, indicator confirmation this is where things like the screeners just totally kill it and of course everybody should look at this final reason for a trade market structure and I mean this is a good example where you could have said to me well Brian you know I like you know this W in here I I'm going to look to buy this breakout level and I'm going to just join this W trade and just see if I can get in. That would have been just an insane fill right there, right off 78.6. Or you could say, well, you know what? I want to see Ws here. I want to see them on rising volume. And I want to see Ws and RSIs and OBVs, i.e. Davos. I want to see a break above moving average resistance. So this is all open air here now. Uh, I want to see resolutions off of the POC, whatever. I mean, Jesus, you can program all this shit into the screeners now. But, I mean, keep it simple, stupid. There's a Davo signal going by the damn thing. <laughs> okay, that's nice and simple. So, um, I mean, I don't know where you could get long. Looks like there's a nice Wyckoff check. You could probably even, I don't know whether it checked the breakout, but anywhere down in that area. Risk against this W, and you know, just simple two to ones. Um, that would be just sort of an initial profit objective, I would think. Come on, you. Oh, there we are, somewhere up in that area. We can think also two things like um, retracements heading back up. So if this really is a bear, this is probably where the bear is going to actually defend reload short zone. We often say, you know, just as 38.2 acted as a check here on the way down, well, 38.2 is probably going to act as some sort of check on the way up here. So let's see where that comes in. And actually, this is a fantastic um, uh, juxtaposition for what you guys just did today in class. So can you see now how uh, this move here to my two to one profit objective is really nothing more than just asking for a 38.2 tag. Is that realistic? I think so. More importantly, when you're trading, what you really should be asking is, is my profit objective unrealistic? And I think that that's actually not unrealistic. Hopefully everybody looks at this and says, well, I can see a reason why the market's going to trade to one level and one level in particular. I can see like three different reasons just looking at this chart. I'll give you a hint. What happens if we bring in the bad boy of TA? Actually, you know, I used to have this cool tweet of... Uh, 
WD Gam putting on shades. <laughs> but check this out. 50% rule. 50% rule, they often say that a market naturally wants to trade back to its 50% level. That's what, if uh, everything's normal, that's what a market should do. But also notice too, gee whiz, there's a hole on the price chart. In fact, look at that, there's a hole right there. But I also notice there's a hole right there. So there's two big holes on this price chart. And then also, I notice that if we ask, where did the market originally break down from? Ironically enough, I think it's actually off of that clothesline level there. You know, some might say, well, you know, how about those tails? That actually looks like a very well-defined uh, head and shoulders top. Either way, <laughs> that also supports the idea of price coming into these levels. So there's 50% rule, there's some price gaps, there's my double bottom through an awesome trade location on a bullish divergence. Is this a trade that's worth trying to take? I think so, it's not bad. That's really what a trader's life's all about. Now, the interesting thing is I don't think crypto is gonna do this, but sometimes in the stock market, you can get handed really nice treats in that um, stocks and, you know, this is exactly the same scenario. So, uh, in fact, actually, this is, this is about the same that waves like here to here, the breakout through here confirming its dips. And it's basically the same thing. Um, stocks, they end the day, they close, and then they announce news overnight. And sometimes this nonsense can happen. So ironically enough, just like the waves, that 50% rule, that's my profit objective. You know, again, is it realistic? I think so. It's not unrealistic. That's the danger when into trading. Most people, they just have completely unrealistic profit objectives. Um, this one gaps higher. I have my open order working at this level and I get handed a really nice treat. I get filled up top here. So uh, this is like the best case scenario for a stock trade <laughs> I could possibly think. Not only do I have a free position established, but I also got a 44% return on my original investment on top of the fact that I have free stock now. So I basically win, win, win. But the point here is that this is a, this is pretty much the same thing. There's no difference. Um, could I go and buy this asset here now? No. You know, if I buy this here, then really I have to be thinking about where key support is. I like W, so that means really I got to risk all the way back down to here. That's where I think key support is. So that means to justify this trade, two to one risk reward, I got to think about this asset trading up basically right up against old highs. Is that realistic? I don't know. Uh, you know, if this is a rip roaring bull, awesome, cool. I mean, it's kind of like buying Bitcoin right now. Um, I mean, could the market move higher? Sure. The market can do any old damn thing it wants. I always have to look at, you know, if I'm going to invest in something like this, what's my downside? And right now, this is this is just assuming that these lows hold. I mean, really, you could argue that key support on this thing is actually back against here. So maybe whatever the bull market that's in, happening in the short term unwinds and it has to come back down, trade down to bottom of value. Totally possible. So anyway, point here is can't be a buyer here. And having a profit objective like this, expecting these highs to be taken out or you know tested in earnest, that's not a realistic short-term profit objective. Pie in the sky, woohoo! You're on your free positions, everything's kicking ass, you got no stress whatsoever, fucking take this thing to the moon. <laughs> totally awesome. But what's a realistic short-term objective just to get yourself into that risk-free trade as fast as possible? Uh, this isn't necessarily selling half on a double. This was just simply, in this particular case, I like these kind of trades from, uh, look at, I'm going to strap this on, maybe, and Jesus, look at that, 50% level, 3.62 to 1 risk reward. That's sex. 
I mean, I'm going to take this shot. I'm going to sell maybe three quarters of the position at this profit objective. And then I'm just going to put my stop to scratch on the remaining. And if the thing craps out and comes back to my entry, fine, I'll walk away. If not, I'm in this thing forever. Totally plausible. It happens. Just be careful if this thing does go face ripping up to keep paying yourself. Because I have seen some people, they get this free position on, the market face rips up, they do nothing, and they're like, well, no, I'm never selling again. And it comes all the way right back down and the next bear market. So that I definitely think is going to happen as well. In fact, I might even argue that the good peoples at, at Waves have actually left us exactly the marker that actually probably marks the bottom. That tail right there is probably your bottom window for your sort of next unwinding the bull. Where do the actual guys who own this thing, where are they going to reload? I bet it's going to be in that tail there. Somebody mark my words. I would not be surprised. <clears throat> so anyway, really cool uh, illustration of the... I think I told you, uh, geez, I, I tweeted out about a month or so ago while everything else was coming down. The this, this silly screeners that Stuart built told us to go and buy some crazy-ass fucking coin, and the damn thing just kept rallying day after day after day, and I never did buy it because it never came back to the price I wanted to pay for it. <laughs> Bastards. So, take advantage of the screener, man. One plus one equals three. Now you guys on level one... Now you all know what half-decent trade location looks like. Go trade location, throw on Davos. There's the end result. That, that happens a lot. Now probably the best thing for you level 1ers is you're still paper trading. You're filling out that, um, that spreadsheet. You're actually asking yourself, can I actually execute off of these levels? One reason why I like, uh, you know, uh, you in the level one right now, you're still learning what the hell a trading plan is, what a setup is. And of course, the you know, next you know month or so, you're just going to be blitzed with all this stuff, explaining things like Davos. Davos are uh, volume momentum and price momentum and the indicators agreeing, right? So you're, we are going to be taught volume and momentum indicators. So by the end of this, you go, okay, now I understand how he, uh, Da Vinci built the Davo. And I can do exactly the same thing. Um, uh, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Just blabbing. Um, 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 um. So, uh, you know, take advantage of the 30-day uh, the, uh, trial subscription. If you're watching on YouTube, you can just totally mine our site, this uh, free uh, screener page. People on the site who are interested, um, I, you know, I am building away my screeners and just getting them working and reporting. You can see lots of signals came in here recently. So that's good to see. I don't really want to be sharing this stuff out until I've like fully vetted all this stuff out. Remember, our official launch date is um, is January 1st. Now, you want to join this Screener Fanatics room. Uh, Seward's basically captain in, captain in there. And uh, talk to him about joining the team. We've got, um, uh, who was it? A couple of people uh, working away on... Um, uh, Paz, I think I want to say Paz. I think I have the name right. Anyway, um, out of Australia, a couple other people working on documents sort of collectively to get this thing all sort of vetted out for the end of the year. So if you want to join them, I know David O, you were asking about the key reversal screener. I'm sure if you pop in there, uh, we could probably show you uh, how to access that information. Um, but uh, I haven't sort of publicly disseminated this kind of stuff. Right now, the, the publicly disseminated screens, I mean, this Davo, this is so money. I mean, Jesus, just follow these here. You're good to go. And of course, remember, nothing ever is guaranteed in this business. You all know that. So let's not, you know, bullshit about this. If you are going to use anything here, you're using it out of your own discretion. There is no financial advice here. This is just strictly for what we call it, edutainment purposes. 
Uh, if you decide to take a trade off of any of this information, it's on your own volition. And we should say consult your financial advisor based on any of those uh, decisions as to the appropriateness of the trade uh, and your plan. Ooh, that sounded good, eh? Uh, all right, so let's uh, maybe now pop on over and take a look at this question. I thought this was a very, uh, very succinct, very perfect question. This is somebody who's actually paying attention, <laughs> and I like this. Uh, you always say that you like assets with max supply around 30 million. Yep, super sexy. The issue, of course, here is mm, we... Uh, this was taught to me, of course, through the equity markets. Uh, you know, can you participate in a Facebook trade or a Google trade or a Microsoft trade with this kind of thinking? No, impossible, right? Because they, they have billions of shares out. So when you do limit yourself to this kind of universe, no doubt about it, you are limiting the amount of assets that you can participate in. When it comes to something like uh, you had written here, you've been buying a little bit of uh, Lumens, um, some Doge, uh, and these coins have bazillions of coins up. So can you explain your logic? What the fuck are you doing? So I like the question. Really, really good question. I am going to say that... Actually, this is, this is the perfect, my mother sitting at the kitchen table having a smoke uh, as I'm getting ready for school and I'm 13 years old and she says, oh, don't, uh, don't, don't smoke, it's bad for you. <laughs> it's sort of like, well, what are you doing, you hypocrite? <laughs> don't talk to me. Um, if you want to set yourself up for the best case scenario for investing, this is the way to go. No doubt about it. Try and find assets with low um, shares out, in the case of stocks, uh, you know, coins out. And like I said, half of the reason why Bitcoin's story is so appealing is because of the number of coins out. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, why would I buy an asset like Doge? Do I actually consider Doge a good investment? <laughs> I'm not even quite sure exactly what a Doge does. <laughs> it's a fun, friendly internet meme. But uh, I would... I would look at something like Doge as nothing more than a sentiment proxy on crypto. And ironically enough, even the founder, uh, I, I chatted with him and I have pictures of him. I, uh, I marched in the parade beside him. Um, and he's even kind of like, you know, this thing is just built for fun. I mean, it doesn't really have any value to it. I suppose you could figure out somehow what the hell the cost to mine a doge is. Shane could probably tell us. Um, but I think it is nothing more than a sentiment proxy in, um, in, um, in crypto. No ifs, ands, or buts. Now, the good part about it is, I mean, like, why would you actually have these cryptocurrencies? That's maybe a question you have to ask yourself. Is it to make a capital gain? If it's strictly to make a capital gain, I think you could probably actually make easier money elsewhere than buying something like Doge. I could see Doge sit and go sideways for like a year or so. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Especially the way, you know, like they, they had a lot of hype built up around their Doge cons and stuff like that. Uh, and all of that, you know, there was supposed to be one this summer. I, I'd be surprised if there's a Dogecon this summer. In fact, I think there was supposed to be one last summer, and they postponed it because nobody was interested. I can't remember, though. Anyway, point here is purely sentiment, purely having fun, um, not thinking about value here whatsoever. So whoever asked this question... 
Doge, there's no way you can make a justification that Doge is a value proposition. Just can't. And as I said to you before, if you really want to try and set yourself up for success, you probably are best to uh, concentrate on value. Remember, I'm the type of guy where I've got like, you know, I got Bitcoin spilling out of my pockets. You know, it's, it's I got it's over here, I got it over there, I got it over here, I got it over there. I, I'm having fun with this more than stressing about uh, making a lot of money, especially in altcoin land, um, where all I'm doing right now, I mean, I'm certainly not really trading these ideas, although you definitely could. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you want to trade this uh, waves? And like I said, there was another one. What the hell was that symbol? It was like, uh, it was like something rep. Do you guys remember? It was like D rep or something like that. I couldn't believe it. It was just the most beautiful signal. And the whole fucking market was just coming off. Yeah, it was right in here. Again, you know, hopefully you look at this and go, yeah, W's, what a surprise. And all the indicators were W'ing out, so Davos, right? And this thing was just chung, 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 chung. Looks like it's sort of calmed down here now. But uh, it was just such a great analogy because, like, Bitcoin was, like, totally coming off through this. I mean, beautiful diversion. So Anyway, um... Where was I going? What I'm doing in uh, crypto right now is I'm just accumulating. And I don't spend a lot of money on this stuff. 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, that kind of stuff, right? And if I think there's a half decent level, I'll just come in and accumulate. But you can see a lot of these are underwater even from these new, these are new accumulations that I just picked up, but most of them look like they're underwater. Um, and I might be adding more. No, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Especially if they're priced in uh, Bitcoin. That's a no-brainer. These things will be coming down in price. Versus US dollar, I keep a good good eye on them. Uh, I was watching this RLC really closely. I was thinking about taking a trade on this guy. It looks like I've missed the window here, which kind of sucks. Uh, but uh, I don't actually have a uh, crypto uh, U.S. dollar position to go and take this trade versus U.S. dollar. So I might even sell maybe a little bit of Bitcoin and put it in U.S. dollars just so I can take these setups versus USD uh, on tracks. Oh, I might do that. Um, to answer your question very specifically... You know, it's interesting, like XLM, that's that Stellar Lumens, right? So again, probably um, 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 a, um, a, a sentiment proxy on the Internet of Things, because that's what I think Stellar Lumen is all about. So if the Internet of Things, and that, what I'm hearing, 5G is coming 100 miles an hour, you know, was COVID sort of the sort of prep us uh, for all this 5G sickness that we're probably going to have to go through? But they'll blame it on COVID and virus and all that kind of stuff. Who knows? But uh, I'm hearing that this 5G shit's coming 100 miles an hour, whether we like it or not. Um, and if anything, I like Stellar Lumen as a uh, is uh, is Cripple. I thought Cripple was uh, XRP. Anyway, what do you got there? Cripple, Ripple, XLM. I thought XLM was uh, Stellar Lumens. I might be mistaken. They are linked. Oh, did uh, Stellar Lumens and uh, Cripple link up? I didn't know that they linked up. Anyway, I, from what I remember, uh, XLM, whoops, uh, XLM was bought up by IBM. Uh, and this is such a weird one, right? This is uh, this is this is the coin that's schizophrenic. I, I I don't understand this, but in essence, it's uh, Stellar Lumens. <laughs> is it Lumens or is it Stellar? Or is it Stellar Lumens? Not bought out. They just were using it. Yeah. So, uh, okay. I'm not quite sure what the connection is with IBM. I was under the impression that IBM uh, was was using them for their internet of things but uh looking at something like this it's kind of middle of the road don't really see anything to get too excited about 
Fortunately for a guy like Brian, right, I have to do crazy things like, uh, you know, it did a nice 50% retracement, but I would really like for it to come down to below value here. And I wouldn't be surprised, I've sort of said this before, I kind of like the idea of a nice little spike up here, in, to, in through that election, Jupiter, Saturn, cross, and then maybe this guy has to come all the way back down here. That's what I would be thinking there. Uh... Anyway, so with regard to your question, um, I would definitely consider them story specific. Doge, Doge is a fun sentiment name. I'm just accumulating at the bottom end of the range. Could he sit there and do absolutely nothing? Absolutely. Do I see any like major fundamental drivers driving Doge and the bull here? No, but I can pretty much guarantee you if crypto lifts, Doge will actually be at the front of the charge. Because it's just nothing more than a sentiment proxy. And it works really well. From what I understand, if you wanted to move money around between buddies, you could use Doge right now, couldn't you? I think the network's still pretty active, isn't it? So, you know, it might even just be a question of why do you actually own these things? If you're, uh, at, you know, if you're a fan of Doge and you're actually using it to move money around, well, well, works fine. I saw on some sites, I don't know whether it's still the rage, but they were actually trading shit coins versus Doge, <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. You know, so after trading shit coins on Yobit, you know, maybe consider using, you know, when you hit one sat versus Bitcoin. How do you go any lower? <laughs> well, one sat versus Bitcoin is like, well, that's, that's a lot of doge. <laughs> so, uh, would I say that either of these two have uh, fantastic fundamental drivers behind them to make them really good value? No. So I hope that helps. You want to set yourself up? Like my mom, stepmom really. Actually, my mother smoked too, but she quit. Good for her. But my stepmother, um, don't smoke. It's bad for you while well, she's puffing away. You want to look at like, well, Brian, why are you buying Doge and telling me to, uh, to only concentrate on low cap coins? That's exactly the same thing. You really shouldn't smoke. Smoking really isn't good for you. Some people are hypocrites. You know, the irony of it all is that... Um, I often bill myself as just another human here uh, on the planet. And uh, half of what I wanted to do with Sjord, bringing Sjord on here, is to actually, because we know what the rules are, but half of the problem with this stupid game is uh, just following the rules and not breaking the rules. Does sometimes Brian look at Doge and say, hey, you know what, I like sentiment. Um, uh, it's a fun name. It's a cute doggy, right? Does that make for a good investment? Probably not. So, good question. I hope that was a very honest response uh, to your question. I don't want to blow smoke up your asses. Okie dokie. Well, um, what should we talk about? Shall we leave it at that? What is it? It's 11.30? It's about an hour or so. You seem like a good dude, Brian. Or I wouldn't be here. Oh, that's cool. Was that you who asked that question? Sunspun? Sunspun. Say that ten times fast. <coughs> uh, Litecoin, Dash, and ZEC. The fees are extremely low, too. Yeah, pretty much. That makes sense. Okay, well, I suppose we'll just do a quick commentary on the corn here and then uh, send you all on your way. So, uh, should we place bets? We should probably have a pool going on the site. Who thinks uh, Bitcoin trades to new all-time highs before the end of this cycle pump? I'm really curious to see what the, uh, the broader sentiment is out there. 
Um, the level tours right now are uh, delving into the world of WD GAN. So actually, I've been doing a lot of these GAN charts lately. Uh, kind of fun. I don't, I don't use GAN a lot. Um, uh, I'll try and keep these uh, angles on the chart. I mean, I think they're pretty valuable. Uh, you know, you might wonder why uh, price is having the difficulty it is at this level. Without this GAN angle, you would have no clue why. But I have to say, man, and especially this angle off the bottom. <laughs> I mean, wow, that's crazy. So... <clears throat> the problem that I have here is that I think we're coming into sort of the end of the cycle. Uh, Jupiter, Saturn, cross. You see the way the stock market's acting. End of political cycles. End of interest rate cycles. Right, Lots of cycles coming to an end. So does it make sense that into sort of this uh, end of this cycle event, we just have a parabolic straight uh, face, uh, face rip move up? Uh, yeah, actually it does. And actually, you know what I think's going on, which is really freaky. Of course, this is total conjecture. But what I think's actually going on here is this uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, and it's Jupiter and Pluto that um, think of it like uh, everybody. You know, the sun is here, and everybody's zipping around. Uh, the sun, right, in their respective cycles. Um, and, you know, if we're um, on Earth, uh, we're on one of these, right? So as we're going through the cycle, we sort of go around. And then, you know, way out here on these way outer ones. So Earth's perspective changes at different points of the cycle. So, you know, these Jupiter, Saturn, or Jupiter, Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto, they don't really move that much, right? They're very, very slow moving. So, if anything, you know, I'm just sort of put them out here. So, uh, Jupiter and Pluto have made their, um, their crossing here, and then there's also Saturn in here as well. Um, so actually, uh, Saturn would be sort of like this one in the middle. Uh, there's your Saturn. And then this would be Jupiter. So, you know, this year in particular, very rarely this happens at all three of them. But uh, the ones that are affecting this cycle, boom, 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 are this Jupiter-Pluto. And think of it sort of like one event happens coming from this angle. Uh, one event happens coming from this angle, and one event happens coming from this angle. Sort of, I don't know whether you can think that, but that's what I think's happened here. So this was the spring, this was the summer, and now we're coming up to the fall. Um, and this one is the one I've been worried about most, because this is the big Jupiter-Saturn one supposed to be like December 21st or something. And it's the biggest one since like 1623. And if you look at the 16th century, oh man, that was a tough century. I guess it would be like the 17th century. It was a nasty, nasty century. And also too, think about sort of our modern world. Think of like, uh, you know, Dickens, right? And, and that world is not a hell of a lot different than the world that we live in now. Uh, versus like Henry VIII, right, and Shakespeare. That was a very different, whoa, hello. <laughs> ah, the spirit of Shakespeare is speaking through me. That was, uh, that was a very different world. And I, I'm sure there are textbook names of the definitions of the transitional world, but that's what I think we're going through. So, uh, you know, that Dickens world sort of started, you know, late 17th century, early 18th century, I suppose, went right up. And actually, the end of the 20th century is, I think, the end of that world. Uh, and the 21st century is probably that transition into the, what the world's going to look like for the next probably three, 400 years. Wouldn't surprise me. It would make sense. I think there's supposed to be a nuclear Armageddon along the way, oh, by the way. Um, so, uh, 
with regard to the corn, I got the impression that we sort of dumped ahead of that event back in the uh, spring um, event over here. And then sort of the event happens and people go, okay, phew, you know, it's over, right? And you get just a natural melt up. Then we had the summer one, same thing, a lot of stress into that event. And then it happened and then the release. I actually feel like this is the exact opposite. So we're going to get like here we had a melt down and then a spring. I think here we get a melt up into that U.S. election, all the sort of stress around that gold rallies the whole fucking thing right just feels like it stock market probably rallies and then we pivot down and that is the whole cycle boom 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 so it's almost like you know and you never know keep in mind this is you know all of this stuff is completely manipulated because the thing the dollar here is stunningly manipulated through all of this it's been diluted to shit so ironically enough, this is built in rise only market, right? Fed, burr, all that, right? So I'm thinking sort of like down, up, right? And then pivot and it's like up, pivot. Does that make sense what I'm saying? You see the sort of sides of what's going on here? That, that's what I think's happening. I don't know. Maybe I'm talking gobbledygook. So, you know, levels, interestingly enough, do you see how this kind of looks like a midpoint fulcrum where, um, and I, I often used to see this a lot. It's very hard to identify it though in the market. I don't know what the name of it is, but it's like this is the middle of the move. Right, and this is the flare, and this is the flare, and we're going through the flare right now. So I would often sort of like, um, obviously this isn't very good, but something like that. Uh, do, do, where's the little drawing thing? There it is, right there. And that means we're probably going to get something uh, like that. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Uh, so where does that take us? That takes us to 16,000 and change. Yeah, 16,500, something like that. That's kind of what I think is going to happen here. So, uh, interestingly enough, if you take this kind of thinking and then you kind of zoom out, and you say, well, you know, has the market been sort of setting up for a move like this? Uh, do I have that chart? Oh, it's, whoa, what happened there? Oh, goodness, what a mess. Oh, crazy DeFi. You crazy DeFi kids. Up to no good, I swear. Get off my lawn. Oh, what do I do with the damn chart? Oh, it sucks if I lost it. Hmm. Uh, doo, doo, doo. Anyway, I had a Gartley pattern on here forever, uh, but it was the three pane one. So where's the three pane one? That one? No. This one. Should be this one. Hey, there it is. Oh, I knew you were in here somewhere. <coughs> it's going to be tough to see. But I've been thinking about this for an awfully long time. So uh, 78.6 off of the entire range, candle body highs. I do like that level right in there, that high there. Uh, that's uh, 16,211. So remember I showed you that sort of, I don't know what to call this. If anybody, I doubt it, but if anybody watching on the YouTube uh, channel happens to know what the name of this uh, pattern is, I've seen it repeatedly in my career. Just I've never seen it actually taught or actually uh, described. But I think that's what's happening right now. So it is interesting how this, maybe you have to draw it off of that low. I'm not sure. You might even have to draw that yellow off of that high. But this, 
Uh, looks to me like we want to paint all the way up in here. I suppose you could argue there's an 877 sitting up there that could be tagged up at 1819. So I think we're going to take a stab up top here into this event, folks. Uh, what happens on the other side of that? Oh, boy, that's anybody's guess. Um, while that happens, I do like the idea of ETH. Uh, do we ever get a new date on uh, their mainnet launch? But I do like the idea of ETH sort of working up into its respective 78.6 here. I have to see how it acts up through here. If it's in a nice divergence. I think we're going to try and do another uh, Cooking with Andrew show tomorrow. So I uh, might share that on the site. I swear, man, he's such a good cook. I can't wait to uh, eat that. It's going to be good feasts. Uh, nothing really here for me to do right now. We've just broken a new high, so bots are on hold. There's 66. If we break above that, then the bear has to go back into the shelf with regard to trend following. If we uh, harmonic out up top here, maybe a nice divergence, nice fractal, M top maybe if we're really lucky. I might look, uh, I think we bought some puts when we were going up here. We sold half on a double. Uh, I might go and buy that original position back. I think there were March options, something like that. So. But nothing for me to do here right now. So, interesting one. Keep an eye on Charlie. I remember last when I did one of these uh, free videos, we were asking about how he was, why he was underperforming, why he was stuck in this downtrend channel. They clearly broke the channel. It was great to see. I think it's probably running up along this channel right now for the time being. Certainly nothing uh, to get my attention here. What I would say for somebody like Charlie is uh, the higher time frame players, they should be paying attention. Not really the traders. So the question is, what type of investor are you? So uh, I can't answer that for you. It's impossible for me to answer that. But uh, this is what I see going on with Charlie right now. This is, this is a good looking base he's got going here. So the uh, short-term people, uh, they're looking for a nice little, uh, yeah, better part of two to one. Probably a little shitty uh, rate of return there. Um, that's just on a nice little fog and bomb off of this double bottom. It's not a bad trade. Uh, it is risking to a break of new lows. I suppose fog and bombers would just simply risk that W. So that would probably crisp up that risk reward a little bit better. Uh, I like this trade, of course, uh, basically buying the reload zone in the original W. Um, that's basically that trade, that stock trade I showed you earlier. The waves trade, that would be that trade. So uh, that's a nice 6 to 1 risk or just looking for a 50% uh, retrace. You know, candle body highs or trade location. That seems like a perfectly logical place for market to uh, find some uh, traffic. Uh, and then, you know, are you a Lambo shopper? Funny thing is, is my, I don't see any reason why this trade can't work. No reason whatsoever. The key, of course, is you're going to have to be damn patient, damn disciplined, and you're just probably going to have to wait. And my hunch is it probably takes, you know, this, you know, maybe a good year or two, but I don't see any reason why this can't trade all the way up here. This thing's got all the hallmarks of I'm trying to put in a long-term base. I'm getting ready to turn. And it's just so obvious to me. So, you know, if you can participate, ask yourself what type of trader you are and then build your plan and just simply, can you actually follow your plan? That's the key to all of this. Okay, well, uh, that's my summary of crypto today. Uh, I've been blabbing away for about an hour, an hour and a half or so. So I uh, hope you guys got some value out of that. Gave you some upside objectives for the corn, which should uh, put smiles on all your faces. Um, great example, I think, of you got to be in there accumulating these, uh, these crypto names while they're at the bottom. Because when they go, they don't look back. So if you can take advantage, do yourself a favor. Um, other than that. Slow and steady wins the race. Obviously, no guarantees from TRI management, but we got such a cool site here. Uh, 
Take advantage of the 30-day trial. Come and hang out and chat in the uh, daily briefs. Actually, somebody PM'd me. I uh, can't remember, but they want to do a 45-minute presentation on a trading strategy that they just learned about order flow. And I was like, okay, sure, why not? <laughs> you know, uh, that's that's the kind of place that TRI is, right? Is that we're all here to try and help each other. Um, I think we we're really about that sort of karma. You know, uh, what probably will end up happening is you'll be like, holy geez, they're giving so much stuff away for free. Um, I might as well uh, line up, join up. Hey, somebody doesn't uh, not a not a fan of uh, Charlie, <laughs> and he's over shopping on eBay. Well, that explains that. So, <laughs> all right, uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. Have yourselves a great day. Uh, wish me luck with the boy. Um, Liam's been in very good spirits of late. I think it's an excellent testament on sort of the public's feeling, you know, relatively okay right now. So, uh, you know, cases are ramping up here in BC, so keep our fingers crossed uh, Liam doesn't catch it. If he does, our life is going to get extremely challenging. Uh, but um, uh, your best wishes, I do see those with regard to Liam, and they really mean a lot to me. I need all the help I can possibly get. And my number one job for him is to uh, try and make his mom happy and proud upstairs. Uh, and, uh, and believe, you know, and believe in us. So, okay, everybody have yourselves a great day. All the best and bye for now.